Hello and welcome to part 4 of Borobudur Temple on Ageless Rock Channel. Borobudur Temple is actually a fascinating temple with no real history. The origin of this largest Buddhist temple in the world has yet to be concluded. According to archaeologists and historians, Austronesians are great seafarers. The Polynesians managed to reach Hawaii, Fiji and Rapa Nui on the far end of the Pacific Ocean. Javanese built Borobudur Temple 300 years before Angkor Wat. But somehow, ancient Javanese didn't know Australia continent is just right down under. Could there be a mysterious side to all these facts that defy logic? Is there a possibility of intervention from beings from another dimension? Borobudur Temple is actually mysteriously linked to Ratu Boko Palace. There are stupas at Ratu Boko Palace that look like those in Borobudur Temple. Even the mainstream archaeologists are puzzled why they are there. Borobudur and Ratu Boko monuments are approximately 36 kilometers apart. Here is an interesting video of a Muslim man who can summon the spirits of an ancient builder to enter the physical body of another man and have a casual conversation. What transpired here would be very subjective. You can say it's pure nonsense or absolute truth. According to the spirit, Ratu Boko Palace was relocated from East Java to Central Java. If that is true, it will be opposite of mainstream where Javanese abandoned their civilization when they moved their capital from Central Java to East Java for unknown reason. Even more interesting is that they were able to relocate from East Java to Central Java in a blink of an eye. Of course, this is just an expression which I think it was done in one night type of scenario. The jinn also revealed that there were Bangsa Pute Malaikat, which can be translated as White Angel Race, who helped with the construction. The jinn also revealed that it was them and with the physical manpower from human Javanese that built Borobudur Monument. So you might wonder how did jinn and men work together to get the job done. As what I understand, the jinn made the stone in melted form. That means it was probably soft like clay in texture. Since there is no quarry, I can imagine raw material is actually soil which is already rich in lava ash. Water was added to this soil and was molded into polygonal stones and shaped the reliefs and Buddha statue in another dimension. When the Javanese who worked with the jinn in another dimension came back to our world, their hazy and vague memories tend to tell a story of a monument built in one night type of legend. I'm not sure who shaped them into polygonal clay and stacked them, but the jinn said they shaped the reliefs when it was in keadaan cair, which means in liquid state. I would assume it was in soft state of manageable material. Since there is no quarry, I can imagine raw material is actually soil, which is rich in lava ash. The fact that there is no chisel as well adds credibility to the revelation through the jinn. Whether this actually happened or not is debatable, but it is definitely a great idea for Hollywood movie. According to this jinn, he is 400 years old in his realm but 3,000 years old on earth. I wonder if this explains why local legends consistently say monuments like Sewu Temple was built in one night actually means one century on earth. When humans travel to another dimension and worked one night figuratively, it's actually many decades or centuries on earth. One more interesting fact about this interview is that the jinn said that the stupas have many functions depending on suitability of the area. So far, it sounds like it can keep the land fertile and can create a happy and healthy community. This info might be a good information for future reference. 
Boro Boro Monument is more than just 2 million blocks of polygonal stones with 504 Buddha statues, 72 stupas, 2,672 relief panels. It is also a monument with unique lions. There are 32 lion statues surrounding the monument. Indonesians during Mataram Kingdom have never seen a lion because lion is not indigenous to Indonesia. If you live in Java 1200 years ago, you will most likely have a hard time trying to imagine what a lion looks like. However, lion is an iconic creature in Hinduism. These lion statues are unique. It has the head of a monkey and hair curls of a Buddha. It is a unique combination for a mythical lion. At the entrance, there are lions to welcome you as you can see from the front leg raised in welcoming manner. But if you are superstitious, you are advised not to touch them because it is said they bring bad luck to relationship. Married couples and those who are in relationships should be cautious. After passing the lions and up the stairs, you enter the monument full of relief panels. You turn left to read the reliefs like a storybook. By the time you reach the top, you would have read 3 kilometers of relief taking 2,500 square meters in area. In 1885, Jan William Eisenman, a Dutch engineer, discovered the bottom of the temple was not only buried in soil but also nicely buried in stone blocks. When the stone blocks were removed, everyone was surprised to find the relief panels hidden by stones. This level is called Karma Vibanga. There are 160 relief panels that shows cause and effect. Each panel is divided into three parts. The panels read from right to left. Part 1 shows the release of animals about to be slaughtered. Part 2 depicts fish released into a pond and chickens are free to roam. Part 3 shows a happy family of prince, consort and child with three noblemen. So, the teaching of this relief panel is the release of animals to be slaughtered leads to a long life. In this relief panel, part 1 shows what appears to be people encouraging a fight. Part 2 shows four people fighting which leads to killing. Part 3 shows death of an innocent child. The teaching of this relief panel is, destroying life leads to short life. Not all panels are divided into three parts. This panel has only two parts. Part 1 describes a sick person getting head massage while someone rubs ointment on his hand and shoulder. Part 2 shows everyone is happy. This story means giving effective medicine leads to healthy life. But this panel has something else more interesting. The lava and the side stone is dark color in natural form. Archaeologists discover pigment colors of blue, red, green and black. This implies that there is a possibility of a special coating called Vajralepa applied to this Porobodo temple. This coating is why you see yellowish color on the release. There is a possibility Borobudo Temple was once a shiny monument. Although we read that this monument was restored and reconstructed by Dutch, it is also important to note that it was the hard-working Javanese who did the hard labor. With the help of Vedana and his wife Raden Ayu in the photo, and thousands more Javanese, Borobudo came back to life. Thanks to them and Vajralepa coating that protects the stone from moss and mold. You can watch my video on Kalasan Temple for more information on this mysterious coating. It would be beyond awesome if Borobudo Temple did actually shine under a full moon in ancient times of Mataram Kingdom. When you visit Borobudo Temple, don't forget to stay overnight. The light display will give you a different perspective of the glorious past of Silendra dynasty. This might be what it looks like under the full moon upon completion. 
So by now, you will understand why Borobudur Monument can be a temple, monastery, vihara, pyramidal stupa, stone library, or powerhouse for unknown astronomical reason. Well, that's all for now and have a wonderful day. Sekian, terima kasih.